Sailors in the Icy Water, from my memoir, Discovered in a Scream. One black night shortly after sailing, Nomi and I, and our friend from Canada, sat in a lifeboat peeking out from under loose tarpaulin, watching explosion after explosion as corvettes fired depth charges into the water. We should have been with our mothers below decks, but our mothers were too busy looking after babies, so we weren't missed when the call to action stations came. I saw ships on fire and heard men screaming in the water below our cutter. Sailors and lifeboats floated about on the icy sea amidst the flotsam and jetsam. They had struggled to the choppy surface through oil slick, debris and frantic companions. People cried. Some were burned. Some were broken and bleeding. Nearly all were encased in oil. In all this agony, our ship picked up no survivors. She couldn't. She would have endangered her own passengers and cargo. As we raced along at full speed, I heard the distant thuds of bursting death charges. I'd already heard adults say, The U-boats are the wolf pack. Where to be sheep for the slaughter? In such tight quarters, gunnery could do little. The Royal Air Force could no longer help us out. We were probably too far beyond their reach in that part of the North Atlantic World War II sailors called the Black Pit. The rescue ship had to be close by, but she couldn't come in all the way without an escort. Worse, Grand Admiral Carl Donitz had instructed his U-boat captains to take no prisoners. The Nazis were in a death struggle as the Allies closed in to end the war. On the deck below, a sailor remarked, It's the graveyard watch. Another replied, Yeah, rightly named. I gazed out at the early glowing horizon. The sea stared back, cruel, heartless and threatening. Suddenly I felt seasick. Only much later would we learn the frightening details of the danger we were in during that blustery March 1945. In the months and years to come, those dangers would return to haunt us in countless subtle ways. Meanwhile, we children were awed, even excited by what we were witnessing. We had sailed from Liverpool on March 13th. We would not reach Halifax until March 24th. Following Stand Easy, we three rejoined our mums for supper. Nomi and I had our faces slapped. Where were you two? I was worried sick. We didn't tell what we'd seen. We never did. This poem relates the same story, and it's from my latest poetry book, Crescent Beach Reflections. It's called Wartime Crossing. British Youngsters, Liverpool to Halifax, March 1945. Lifeboats, deck level ready, hiding place for hidden pleasures, pilfered sweet caps and spearmint gum, beneath the canvas, hid from adult eyes. We'd have our ears boxed, backsides booted, depending on who caught us, if they did. Played our dreams of Indians and birch canoes, skis and all we'd heard from men on board of miles and miles of prairie wheat, cowboys, horseback mounties, bears, wolves, and mountains even taller than the Alps. Enthralled, we did not hear the call to action stations. We were used to bombs and guns, played bravado, and were thrilled in our excited fear. Then the hoot of ship's horns, running boots, and the thump-thump of depth-charge ash cans 
dropped to kill Donaldson's boys slinking beneath the waves. Peeking out, we watched the flash and smoke of battle on the frothy sea and fired our finger guns at submarines we could not see. Nor could we stop to pick up sailors screaming in the icy waves, but ploughed through oil-soaked men who cursed us as they drowned. When all was calm and we snuck out, and when frantic mothers boxed our ears, we said not where we'd been nor what we'd seen. Yet in restless sleep for nights and years to come, we'd shrink from blood-soaked hands and see the scattered flames that brought them death. <laughs>